Hi, welcome to 16-Bit Bench. Matt here. Um, this is part three of making a Game Gear uh, Retro Pi Raspberry Pi portable. Um, if uh, I'll link the other two videos right here, and um, you can see those if you've missed them. So where we're up to now is I've installed the two plates to hold all the buttons for the um, controls. Uh, down here I have the, the Teensy USB uh, programs and it has two touch touch sensors as well on the left and right front of the bezel so that means if I touch um, sort of around the power LED or just below the Sega logo that gives me two additional touch buttons there um, I've started to remove some of the components from uh, from the Raspberry Pi so the pin head is gone and one of the USBs is gone and what I'm going to do um, today is remove the other USB uh, and extend it out to here so you can see there's a USB plug here where the um, Game Gear Link uh, plug used to be. Um, yeah so one of the things to note is uh, the, the internal of Game Gear is covered with conductive paint and what I found was if you don't remove it and you put your, conduct, your capacitive touch sensor on it uh, the entire case becomes a touch sensor so just, just touching the case would turn the switch on and obviously that's a problem if you've got two switches um, or if you just want to hold it and not and not press a button so um, yeah what we've done is uh, taken a Dremel to the area around the switches and just Dremel away all of that uh, conductive paint and that solved that problem now and these two these two touch buttons work really well so yeah the uh, the only thing I really gonna uh, do in this video today is is to show you how to use a um, solder rework heat gun to remove um, the USB connector. I'm thinking that the Ethernet connector may be able to stay. Uh, there may, there looks like there's enough room uh, just below here for that to live. And that would be really handy because it's useful to, uh, to be able to plug that in and not have to use wireless. Um, and if you wanted to use wireless, then you just have to put in a, um, a dongle here or uh, put a USB hub, plug that into there and plug and plug your USB devices in so that should be fine. And then the final thing to do is to wire up the USB from the Teensy directly to one of the USB uh, headers that we've removed, so to the pads on the board. Um, yeah, so I'm going to do that today and then I think there'll be one more video uh, where we integrate the sound and power uh, from the original Game Gear to drive, drive the uh, Raspberry Pi. So yeah, I'll get on with uh, the reworking now. So you can see just off the bottom of the camera here that I've got a, um, some helping hands uh, and they're holding the board sort of off the table. And then on the table I've got uh, just this cutting mat that you might have seen me use before and it's pretty wrecked. Um, but uh, it's reasonably uh, heat retardant. And then, um, so I'm using a um, 858D and I'll put a picture of it here there's a picture of it uh, that's a pretty standard um, solder rework station uh, I think Dave Jones reviewed it and here's a link to Dave Jones's video uh, there um, and uh, a few years ago and he was pretty happy with it so it's a good basic entry-level mo model if you're doing this kind of stuff it's perfect for that um, if you were rebuilding all kinds of complicated service mount things then maybe it's not not really suitable for that and you need to go do something a bit better uh, but yeah I've got it here um, this is the nozzle for it uh, it's set to 400 degrees Celsius uh, which um, is I found a pretty good working temperature for this stuff uh, read the instructions the instructions were completely no help uh, but what I did find was that um, uh, the forums uh, were better so people who, who bought this and were looking for help or or an idea um, you know some people were saying oh yeah really low 275 something like that and other people were like you know super high but uh, 400 seems to work for me and um, that means I'm not damaging any of the other components realistically you're only uh, adding heat in this area here now uh, you may see people with people when they do this they cover the board uh, with foil or something else that's uh, heat retardant um, I don't really think you need to do that, but if that's something that you're worried about, then absolutely go ahead. Um, 
but I've uh, done this on a few boards and I've not really suffered any problems. Um, so we're fine. So what I'm going to do now is turn it on and uh, wait for it to heat up. Don't leave it laying down on the desk like that. You're going to melt something. Um, so it's the temperature uh, decreases with distance. So if I was to put my hand right up to it, and obviously I'm not, I'm, I'm below it. If I was to put my hand here, I would now be having serious burns. Um, but if you're out at this distance, it just feels like a really weak hairdryer. The, um, the fan in it is not very strong. It doesn't need to be. It just needs to be strong enough to push the air out the end of the nozzle. And then the heating element here superheats that air to your required temperature. Um, yeah, so you, you know, at, at this point I can feel it's, I can feel it's hot there. I don't want to get any closer than that. I'm going to burn myself if I do that. But really the only place, the only place you need to be worried about probably is that like sort of bit at the front there. That's where the air is, is really hot. And after that it, it quickly dissipates. Okay. So, um, this takes a while. So why don't we uh, speed this up? Okay, and, and there we go. Um, yeah, it just takes uh, takes a few minutes there to get it get it hot enough. Um, what I've found with these uh, is the plastic on the bottom does tend to become brittle at temperature. Um, so when I'm trying to prise it off, yeah, it just snaps in my fingers. Look, it just snaps away. So when you're trying to prise it off, it does get a little bit hard. Um, but yeah, um, this tool, the the rework gun. Makes your life a million times easier if, you, if you're considering doing any kind of electronics on a long-term sort of basis. You know, rather than just one or two projects. If you're thinking of doing this, you know, over over a few project projects, uh, this cost me thirty pounds from eBay. Um, not massively expensive. Um, obviously, you can pay hundreds to you know up to thousands of pounds for for a uh, uh, expert level one. Um, but yeah, uh, it works. It works perfectly for this kind of work. And uh, if I take the board off, the board's still a bit warm. Uh, yeah, the Ethernet connector is a bit hot. Uh, but you can see um, there's no ripped traces, there's no pulled up bits. I've, the only mangling is, is really from me, where I've you know tried to prise things off before they're really ready to come. Uh, but yeah, this uh, this all this all worked really well. Came off really quickly. Um, None of the uh, none of the components on the other side of the board suffered or, or fell off or any of that, so uh, yeah, it worked. Uh, highly recommended. Uh, like I said before, I'm thinking I'm going to leave the Ethernet connector on just because it's super useful um, for programming and it seems to fit in the case. So uh, so we'll see if we can get away with that. Yeah. So the next bit to do um, is to wire up the USB uh, directly to the pins on here. So um, and that's relatively easy to do. So we know uh, from the USB pin out that it's um, it's power, data plus, data minus, then ground on the four USB pins. Um, we're only really interested in the two data pins um, in the middle, but we'll, co we'll connect power and ground as well, obviously. Um, and each uh, each of the, they had four USBs on it originally, so I've got four USBs here, I only need to use two. So I'm going to wire one to the Teensy and one to the USB extension that, that replaces the game link connector. So yeah, I'm going to do that work, uh, going to do that work now. So I'm just doing a, a dry fit of, um, to see how, how it goes together. Uh, I can see that I'm, this USB connector is kind of out of position. So that needs to be repositioned. That's the wire for it. I'll just, taken out of the top for now. Uh, but other than that, with all almost all the components in it, you can see the, the case closes. Um, it you know it looks right. Uh, if we open it up the correct way. Um, so yeah the, the uh, Raspberry Pi is going to fit quite well. It's in it's basically in this space here. Um, 
on the reverse of the shell. Uh, so that means there's enough room for the ethernet connector and that will stay inside and uh, be accessible uh, quite easily. If I find an ethernet plug, I think I had one, here's one. Let's see if I can get that in there. It might be a tight squeeze. You might need to find something flatter than uh, than this type of plug, but yeah, it will. It, you might be able to get it in there. If not, I can always uh, remove this this plate here and lift that out of the way, and then that will give me clear access into the into the Ethernet. Um, really, it's only there as an emergency measure, so you can get back onto the Raspberry Pi um, if all else fails. So it's good to have if I don't need to remove it. Uh, but yeah, uh, joy fit works. So now we just need to reassemble the parts, and uh, we should be able to uh, to play uh, a game really quick today. And then, as I said, next video, sound and power are the two things that need to be hooked up. I've connected up the USB connectors and hardwired the um, the Teensy, and as you can see, everything still is fitting pretty well within the case. Just uh, yeah. There's a USB connector there. I think once the case is screwed together, then like that's gonna look really good. Uh, okay, so let's open it up and have a look inside. So nothing attached to the back yet. That's where the sound and power goes and that's the next video. Um, so here we are inside. I've got a couple of things I've done. Um, let's, uh, let's grab the phone actually. It'll probably be easier to see it. With, uh, with the mobile phone if I do a close up. So on the top here, we've got the Raspberry Pi and then the driver board for the LCD and the LCD at the bottom. There's one of the touch sentences and there's the other one there. From last week's video, you can see the, uh, the plates. So if we come under, under the, uh, the Raspberry Pi, so you can see in, in the HDMI connector there is, I've taken the KD jumper that came with the um, LCD. And if you look there, I've extended it out. Um, so what I've done there is I used the hot air rework gun to take off the bottom connector, so this lower connector, and then wired a ribbon cable to that connector there to give an extension uh, to the USB. And that works really well. You can see that whole board now just sits sits there like that um, uh, and that's pretty flush so these cables here this is the uh, USB cable for the Teensy and you can see that yellow plug under there so what I did was I took the existing uh, mini USB cable that came with the Teensy and I just hacked it up um, so I could plug it in there and the reason for doing that is twofold one uh, I was having a really tough time soldering to the back of the Teensy USB connector. You can just see just in there, there's the USB connector. Um, so I was planning to solder to the back of it and run a, run a ribbon cable out. That wasn't working. Um, and I didn't want to remove the USB connector in case I need to reprogram the Teensy at some point. So yeah, I just hacked up a, uh, a, a mini USB cable there. A bit of heat shrink on it just to make the wires nice and safe. And then they come up here. Um, the wiring is five volts red, ground is black, uh, data minus is yellow and data plus is blue. Um, so yeah, that was pretty easy. And then we've got the other USB connector here with the wire coming out around the back and onto the US, the back of the Pi. And these are where the, where the USB connectors were before. Uh, let's just see other changes I've made. If we, can we get under here? Can't really get under here, but on the on the LCD, um, I pulled the. There was a power jack here, isn't needed because the LCD is powered from the Pi by these wires, so that came off. Uh, this ribbon cable here that's just stuck to the case is the uh, touchscreen ribbon cable, and that's not being used. And then way under here, and we can't see it, is the audio connector coming from the screen. So the way the audio is going to come is through the HDMI to the screen and the screen had an audio jack on it which you would then use your headphones for. And what I'm going to do is take the wires from that audio jack and they will go out to the soundboard and then the soundboard will control the volume. So that's uh, that's for next week's video. 
Oh yeah, so this is how far we've got. The whole thing fits in. Uh, it powers up, it's working. I can actually play a game. Um, I won't do that and that right now. We'll save that for the final video when it's actually all working and that'll be something fun to look at. Um, yeah, so there we go. Uh, if you found this use video useful, please, uh, please subscribe to us um, and like it. Uh, follow us on Facebook and Twitter, 16-Bit Bench. Um, yeah, we'll be one more in this series and obviously we're doing all other videos as well and really fun things like like um, in the UK going thrifting which and car boot sales which are like flea markets and all that stuff looking for fun things. Um, yeah, it's, we're having a grand old time on this channel and we'd really like you to join us and, and like comment on our videos and, and become part of it. That would be great. Well, thanks a lot for dropping by and we'll see you next time.